Hey, Marcus Conti reporting. Wow, we're going to talk some Bernie Sanders today. I know. Give me the squinty lemon face already. I right? fucking Bernie Sanders, right? Back in the news, Bernie Sanders running for president. But look who I got with me today. You're not going to believe this. I got fucking, I got Jared Beck, right? The, the attorney for the DNC fraud lawsuit. You remember the DNC fraud lawsuit when Bernie Sanders got the knife stuck in his back the first time with, uh, with uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz? You remember the ugly story, right? So Jared Beck, is, uh, he's, he's on and he's listening, and uh, I'll bring him into the frame one second. Let me, um, let me just show you his book. So this is uh, Jared Beck is the uh, author of What Happened to Bernie Sanders. This is his page over on Amazon. Check it out. And um, it's, a, it's a good read. He, he gives you the real story. So we're going to talk to Jared Beck. And uh, let me bring him in right now. So what's so, up? Ah, here we go. Where's Jared Beck? Jared Beck. Jared Beck is now. You, they can see you now. The, the problem we're oh. having is that Jared can't see me, but we see him, and uh, he hears he hears me uh, perfectly, perfectly well. Yep. I and can so, hear you loud and clear, Marcus. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Let me, uh, I, I'm like, uh, I don't really have many notes, but the, the questions, let's, let's just jump right into it. So, so Bernie Sanders, here we go. He's he's running he's running for president again at tomorrow. Uh, he's he's out in Brooklyn. Uh, he's over here in Brooklyn. He's going to do his uh, first big rally uh, at Brooklyn College. He's gonna he's gonna rally the troops. Give me my twenty seven. Give me another twenty seven dollars. Right. He's got a million yeah. people already. Another twenty seven dollars. Right. Let me let me uh, before I, before I, <laughs> before you comment, I gotta read, I gotta read this. Uh, so let me let me just let me just see. So this is um, this is Jared's. Uh, what what is Jared before he talks? What does he think of it? So this is Jared um, uh, he tweeted this out, and this is his tweet. They could see a tweet right now. It says, "Blocking every brainwashed idiot who wants to tell me to be selfless." By giving my hard-earned time and money to any fake Bernie Sanders presidential campaign. <laughs> Just get the hell away from me and don't come back. I sued the DNC for fraud in 2016. Two witnesses dropped dead and your precious Bernie didn't lift a finger. I have no cares how, to, uh, how you choose to waste your time and money. Flush it down the toilet for all I care while you engage in your pathetic Bernie fantasies. Just get your brainwashed zombie cultish shell of an existence far out of my orbit. <laughs> that's some that's some powerful shit right there, man. Yeah, it's that? harsh. It's harsh. I yeah. mean, it, you, look. I mean, you know, I I recently got banned from Twitter because, uh, you know, I I send out probably too many tweets uh, of that nature. But, um, you know, uh, I. You know, I, I, I like to think of myself as providing or trying to provide some tough love here uh, to people that, you know, I mean, there's really no other word that I can use except that people seem pretty brainwashed. Um, you know, Bernie Sanders ran in 2016 in a rigged primary. Uh, people lost a lot of money. Uh, nothing in the DNC has changed uh, since 2016 that would lead anyone to believe that these uh, primaries in 2020 are going to be fair or real elections in any sense. And yet, you know, here we have people, you know, opening up their wallets to Bernie Sanders again. And, you know, he's already raised $10 million. So, you know, from the perspective of a lawyer that wants uh, to see people not get defrauded, and, and you know, make good decisions with their time and money. You know, it's very, very frustrating. Right. He's out on TV right now. He's saying that, um, you know, uh, I can't I'll paraphrase him, but he's 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 parroting the Russia Gate. Russia did it. He there's no remorse. There's no there's no. You, so you were the attorney. Just to clarify, you were the attorney, the lead attorney yourself and your wife to uh, to counsel and DNC for a lawsuit and Bernie Sanders throughout the whole process never reached out to you right he never 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 said never. a damn word and he so he's I mean let me ask you this what kind of idiot right 
still believes that with all we know that Russia hacked the election and it wasn't a, a, a knife job from uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Donna Brazil and all the all the, uh, the the suspects that we know were deeply involved uh, in, in in the DNC's own uh, words in court. They said that they have they they can pick the you know pick the candidate in back rooms smoking cigars right. if they feel like right? right. So what kind of idiot today still believes that that Russia? You know, Russia did it and not uh, the DNC did it to themselves. Well, I, I think uh, I don't think anybody with a brain in their head who's really paying attention actually believes that. I think what you have is, um, you know, just this extraordinary mass media, mainstream media propaganda campaign that's been going full steam ever since 2016 to um, distract people from the real problems and issues in this country. And Bernie Sanders has been a big part of that. Uh, he's, he's gone hook, line, and sinker into this whole Russian narrative, which is ironic because what he really should have been doing after 2016 was standing up uh, for his supporters who gave $250 million to his campaign so that he could run in a rigged election. I think that's what a true leader does as they stand up for their supporters, they stand up for the people that stood by them. I mean, we have, you know, the thing that makes me really angry about this whole situation, Marcus, is that, you know, we've got people that, you know, really uh, gave their last dime to the Bernie Sanders campaign in 2016. I mean, we've got homeless people in our, um, in our, our class of plaintiffs uh, who gave you know, the, the last bit of change they had in their pockets to Bernie Sanders uh, because they believed that you know, this was going to be a, a fair election and they believed that in, in what Bernie Sanders was saying. And, and, and to have Bernie Sanders sell those people out so blatantly and basically become a uh, talking head for the Democratic National Committee, the very organization that screwed him over so blatantly in 2016 is just very, very frustrating. And I don't see how um, it has anything to do with leadership. Yeah, no doubt. He's doing it again. I mean, he's on TV saying uh, in, in his debate, uh, the CNN debate, he said it, that whoever the Democratic candidate, even if it's not me, I will support the, you know, I'll support the candidate. And I don't think, I think he, I mean, I, I'm sure you agree that, the that's a bad uh, that's a bad approach election approach because people hate the 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 characters that he's talking about you know right. when you talk about you know like Debbie Wasserman Schultz or or even even like you know he's talking about uh, the the other candidates like uh, like uh, Elizabeth Warren or co- people like Cory Booker right? yeah. people people paying attention hate these people and the 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 strength of bernie sanders was that he ran independently and to uh i mean i don't i don't really i, I mean we could kick this can down we're, we're we're clearly on the same page that that uh the dnc clearly rigged a a an election in america right and and people just ex people are forced to accept that right and right. and bernie sanders doesn't He's 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 by not by not acknowledging it. He's saying that there is no election fraud. That it that, that the elections were uh, uh, rather rather honest and and stuff. So, right. I, I mean, I, I don't really I don't really know you know where we go we'll go from there. I mean, all right. So let's look at Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders for Medicare for all. He's for the things that we agree on, right? Medicare for all, income and wealth and equality in the country. Get money out of politics, right? He's he's for taxing the, the large corporations he's for you know uh you know what else gun he's he's again he's not for gun control right he's for he's for gun control to you know so he's not a a uh, a good uh, second amendment guy but for the most part he he woke us up to those facts but yeah. how do we get around the, the this 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 i guess the elephant in the room right it's still it's still there Right? Yeah. He's calling Trump a racist. Right? He's he's not fessing up to to uh to election fraud. 
and um, and and as you said, nothing has changed. You know, so right. That's so, the big problem. Is that you know the, the reason that I back in 2016 that I became a Bernie Sanders supporter. My wife became a Bernie Sanders supporter. I mean, you know, from from my angle, it was that you know he was saying things that I think are hard truths that Americans have to swallow about the oligarchic nature of our political system. Right. Um, the fact that, you know, we live in an oligarchy, uh, that, you know, money in politics has gotten really so out of control that uh, the people of this country really don't have a voice in their representative institutions anymore. And I think he was very strong on those points. The problem is that he got, you know, screwed himself on the national stage by this very system that he purports to be fighting to change. And then instead of taking it to the next level, and he had an opportunity to take it to the next level, he turned tail and capitulated uh, to the very forces that he was leading everybody, everyone to believe that he was uh, going to take the fight to. And that's really where I have the issue. Um, is that, you know, he, he promised that he was going to take the fight all the way. He promised that there was going to be a contested convention in 2016. And what did he do? He, he, he bowed to Hillary Clinton, despite all the evidence that she was the pre-selected candidate by the DNC. So I really see it as a missed opportunity. And that's what, you know, from my perspective, it, it really angers me and disappoints me about the whole Bernie Sanders situation is that I think he had a great opportunity to really become a transformative figure right. in American politics. And uh, I think he blew it. I, he blew it. Who knows why? I think maybe at the end of the day, he just didn't have the backbone to actually stand up to the DNC on his own. Um, a lot of people, if you look at people that still support him, uh, you know, and are going to support him in 2020. I mean, they make all sorts of excuses. Oh, you know, Bernie was threatened at the convention. You know, the, the Clintons threatened him. Well, you know, to be a leader, you have to be able to deal with threats on right. behalf of your supporters. You can't mm -hmm. turn tail and run. And, and you know, everything post-2016 about Bernie Sanders, to me, uh, just reeks of enormous cowardice. Uh, and, uh, you know, I really don't understand how anybody can support this guy in 2020 seeing, you know, his track record. Right. I mean, from a, from a legal perspective, you're a lawyer, you know, I've been in a bunch of lawsuits, right. And from a legal perspective, there is really, I mean, what he's saying about Russiagate that the Russians hacked the election when we, not to relitigate the whole thing, but, but when you look at the details, right, that there was no, there's no evidence that uh, that Russians swooned in onto the to the DNC servers, hacked the election, dumped it to WikiLeaks, were were actively rigging primaries all across the country. The evidence overwhelmingly uh, uh, suggests that the DNC rigged the election against Bernie Sanders in favor of Hillary Clinton. The exit polls didn't match. When they didn't match, they they actually canceled the exit polls. There's enough evidence to suggest that maybe the machines themselves were rigged, uh, you know, and and on and on and on. Primaries were were uh, uh, people were purged off the rolls. Like for example, in Brooklyn here, two hundred thousand people late, uh, people that that registered late. Uh, were purged off the rolls, which indicates that they were probably Sanders, you know, uh, voters. Two million votes in in California not counted, and on and on and on. Right. So so it's election right. fraud. That's what Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but 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 so so you make a good point. There's a lot of there's a lot of cheerleaders right now. You've got, you know, I, I look. I'm I'm grounded in the truth. Right. I'm not a Bernie. Uh, booster or Trump guy or any of those. I'm I'm an American, right? Like I think you mm -hmm. are too. We're we're Americans, oh, yeah. and we want to see what's in the best interest of the country, right? What's in the best interest here, right? And and to say, okay, yeah, Bernie Sanders stands on the issues, but he gives no guarantee whatsoever that he's not going to fold like a cheap suit again. 
uh, under pressure. He's going to be an Obama. Yeah, he's going to rah, rah, rah. Right. And then, then he gets elected, and then, and then that, that's the end of it, right? So Exactly. Uh, so so why is he, you know, why is he a better, I guess, why is he, there's a lot of Trump people watching that are going to see this and they're going to say, you know, he's a fucking socialist. He's a, he's a commie, a commie slash socialist. You know, all, all that is, is, is really just propaganda. I think that the big issue is, is the Russiagate. Would, you, mm-hmm. would you, you know, would you agree that, would you agree with that assessment kind of? I mean, Well, yeah. What's I his other obstacles? I- what else? Well, you know, what we have to understand in, is, is exactly how the rigging of elections takes place in this country. And I think you break it down very well that there's a lot of stuff that goes on at the machine level, the ballot purging level, um, in the conduct of the elections themselves. But there's also another big part of it, which is uh, the creation of media narratives that essentially decide the election in the media before the elections even take place. And I went through a lot of this in my book to really dissect how, you know, Bernie Sanders was portrayed as uh, the losing candidate uh, by the mainstream media even before his campaign even got off the ground. And the reason that happened is because, uh, you know, the DNC and the mainstream media in this country are uh, intimately intertwined. They're like one entity, okay? Right. And that's what people have to understand, is that you know, a, a, an organization like the DNC has the ability to create the narratives because they're so interconnected. The media people, the DNC people, they're very, very incestuous. In a lot of cases, you know, they're you know, you have people that are married to each other. They go in and out. They go from media uh, to politics and back. And they're really able to create and drive the narratives in this country uh, that ultimately drive and determine the elections. So when we go back to 2016, we had, um, you know, I mean, Bernie Sanders was portrayed as the loser from the get go because. Uh, the DNC wanted him to be portrayed as the loser because they wanted Hillary Clinton to be the nominee. Okay, and then when she didn't uh, win the election, the next narrative that was created by the media was this Russian narrative. Okay, and why was the Russian narrative created? It was created to take the public's attention off of what the WikiLeaks documents actually say about. Uh, how the 2016 primaries were conducted, which is that they were a sham, okay? You've got memos in those uh, WikiLeaks documents, internal DNC memos that show in black and white that the DNC was doing uh, just what it said in our case in court, which is picking the candidates in, in, in uh, behind closed doors, okay? It's in black and white. The evidence is there. So what did the media have to do? They had to come up with a whole other... Um, story, uh, really a fiction that is created out of thin air, which is that uh, the elections were not uh, uh, predetermined or fixed by the DNC, but actually uh, uh, hacked by Russia. I mean, it's really just just a whole load of nonsense. But the thing is, is that the NAS media in this country, and it's been true for a long time, it really has the ability to brainwash and hypnotize people. Yeah. And I think that's a lot, what, a lot of what's going on. I think when you see the Bernie people today, I mean, they, they bear all of the signs of being hypnotized and brainwashed. Gaslighting. Okay. Gaslighted, yeah. I guess, is the word, right? Yeah, gaslighting. Exactly. Uh, but there's no, there's no reasoning. You know, you can't have, if somebody has been gaslighted, and um, brainwashed, and ultimately uh, they're in the th- you know under the grips of a mainstream media narrative. Um, you cannot really have a, a constructive conversation with that person. Um, and I think remember, that's a lot of the f- yeah, yeah the frustration that's going on right now mm-hmm. in this country is we're dealing with a lot of people, a lot of brainwashing that's gone on, and I think it's really completely infected the political culture and the political system in this country. It's a scary idea. I mean, we, I mean, we can almost back up the tape and look at the, 
the day that I remember Robbie Mook and and Hillary Clinton and whoever came up, whoever whipped up that idea that Russia did it was in 2016 was laughable. It was it was like a joke. You're kidding me. We're following all along and we're telling you over and evident we're revealing evidence after evidence that that the DNC was through the WikiLeaks uh, revelations and and other things, just you know, blatant election fraud across the country, and they're turning around saying that that Russia was doing it. It was like, it was almost what what, what I'm trying to, what I what I observe is that in 2016 it was almost a joke to mm-hmm. people that were paying attention, and then slowly the gaslighting. They keep saying telling the lie over and over again, and right. then right. Now, here's the big question. Do you believe, in your heart of hearts, do you believe that Bernie Sanders is, is lying about Russiagate, or does he really believe it? What do you think? No, I don't think, I don't think he believes it. I think he uh, has reached a political calculus in his own head uh, where he's come to the conclusion that he has no choice but to um, toe the party line. And I think it ultimately is probably an act of self-preservation on his part because he's a longtime, you know, senator and he's, he's as bought into this political system as anyone. And at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think he has any real incentive, uh, to disrupt it. Um, and I think what we need in this country is a disruption of some kind. We need leaders that are going to be able to stand up and actually um, take on the uh, oligarchic media structure that dominates our uh, politics. But I think it's clear that Bernie Sanders is not that person. Um, but, but I but, thought Trump, isn't yeah. Trump doing it? Trump's building a wall. Isn't he, uh, isn't he fighting the oligarchy? He's building a wall. He gave him tax breaks he gave them he knocked their tax down from 34 percent to 20 percent right he's making america great again well, right well no but i think i think trump is another side of the same coin with bernie right. sanders i think it's all you see the same pattern um uh you know reproduce itself again and again if, if you start looking for these you know things and you start really become becoming attuned to what's going on in american politics and i confess you know before 2016 you know, I was as much in the dark as 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 a lot of people about mm-hmm. the true nature of our political system. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, you know, and and uh, you know, I think you have to wake up at some time, at some point. But you know, just getting back to what you were saying about the Russian narrative, I think it was uh, Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propagandist, who said that if you repeat a lie enough times, it becomes the truth. And I think that you know, when you have you know, the mass media pumping out uh, uh, stories about this Russia narrative constantly, you know, in a very, very high pitch over and over and over again. Yeah, you're going to you're going to uh, you're going to ma- create uh, a new reality. And that's what's gone on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's classic propaganda, classic mm-hmm. propaganda. So, so not to relitigate. I, I know uh, talking about the DNC fraud lawsuit. It's not. It's not even. I think what my my view of it, the takeaway is that you, the work that came out of that is that you got the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, to admit in open court that they in fact rig a primary. Now, in a in a in a in an ideal world, I mean, like even in not even in the, the 80s or the 90s, that would have been the headline, that would have been the, the deal breaker, that would have been the, 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 the story of the century, that would have, you know, called for the resignations of every major player. I mean, you know, you talk about what Nixon did. Nixon, you know, bugged an office. But these guys op- not only rigged an election, but, but uh, admitted it in open court. And that, of course, that speaks to the, corruption in the judicial system where now we have to say well the judges are paid off the judges are you know they're in the, they're in the tank as well so there's we have no we have no uh, legislative branch that functions anymore the judicial branch is 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 pay for play for lack of a better term 
We have an executive branch that's overrun by what everybody loves to call the deep state, you know, the, the CIA and the FBI and, you know, and you, you know, so, so I don't know what I was trying to say, but, but the, the point is that it's, it's a, it's a colossal breakdown in, 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 uh, America, you know, the, the, the system, you know, the system that we, 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 I guess we knew our, my grandparents, you know, our mm-hmm. parents knew, Right, and it's yeah. it's over now. It's it's as you say, it's an oligarchy. It's not right. What Sanders is saying, we're moving towards an oligarchy. We are an oligarchy. We are an oligarchy. I think that's an important part. Is that right? Uh, we are an oligarchy, and we have to confront that fact, you know, honestly and productively as citizens. You know, which is why I like, you know, I, I you know, people. I think people want to hold on to this fantasy in this country that, you know, you're a good citizen, uh, a good informed citizen. If you watch the news and you go to vote, you know, in an election every two years or every year or every four years or what have you, and you're doing your duty as a citizen. Um, But that's actually um, that's not actually not the case anymore because, you know, we're not the Democratic Republic that we once were and that we believe ourselves to be. Uh, We're in a different system now. And so, um, you know, when I see people like you, you know, in, in, you know, doing independent media and trying to, you know, battle, um, you know, the, the, the media, the mass media superstructure in this country. I mean, to me, that's the contributions that people can make as citizens that, um, maybe are more in the direction of being productive than just pulling a lever in an election every, you know, couple of years or sending money to these candidates. Because I got to tell you that, I mean, you know, I, I really, I really think people need to understand and, ex- and, and, and begin to accept the idea that elections are a total scam in this country. Yeah, um, and you're, you're not, you're not acting as a good citizen by, participating in a scam and telling yourself that you're an informed voter when voting means nothing. And, you know, you got to step it up a notch when you're dealing with a government of this nature. And especially if we're going to, you know, restore a, a, a Republican form of government to this country, which I something I care very deeply about. I mean, my, my grandfather fought for this country in World War II. Uh, he didn't fight for an oligarchy. He fought for a republic. And I think it's a shame that here we are, um, you know, in 2019 and we've got, you know, obviously rigged elections. We've got a media that is just lies through its teeth every day of the week. Um, And, uh, you know, we don't really have people. I mean, honestly, you know, you see a lot of people that on social media that seem to be upset about it, but we don't have. You know, people marching in the streets like they have in France with, with the yellow vests, right. you know. I mean, I think there's a lot of waking up that still needs to go on in this country. Yeah, no doubt. So let's uh, let's just talk about, I don't want to dig up dead bodies, but let's talk about, let's give him his due. So Seth Rich, yeah. uh, Sean Lucas, right? Those are two names that people are going to recognize. They'll recognize Seth Rich because Seth Rich was... Uh, arguably, we don't know for sure. Nobody ever. The only person that probably does know is is uh, Julian Assange. That uh, Seth Rich was in fact the the guy who dumped the WikiLeaks, the revelations to uh, the, those the the DNC emails and the Podesta emails to WikiLeaks, and um, and he disappeared. Right? He's not. I mean, there's a lot of speculation that maybe he's not dead. Maybe mm-hmm. he is dead, and and uh, or he 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 died a different way. Like they told him, they gave him a deal, and then they did him in there. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they just what's what's clear is that Seth Rich didn't die on the street in D.C. that night the way the FBI told us that he did. That's I think that's. Do, do you agree with that assessment based on what we know about the, well, the, the my, crime yeah, scene? My- my assessment of Seth Rich is that it's an unsolved murder um, of somebody that uh, uh, would almost certainly I, I, have been I a, wit- interrupt a you, witness. I only witness. bring it up just to show the severity, 
the yeah. severity of what we're dealing with, that people's heads do roll. Right. right? That's all. That, I, I'm sorry. I cut you off. No, no. It's, it's, it's an important topic, and I think we need to put it in, in line with a, a whole other host of events that have happened over the past couple of years that are very disturbing. I mean, I'm, I'll put Las Vegas in that category sure. as another uh, example of a crime uh, that, uh, you know, hasn't really been solved. The borderline shooting as well. You remember the borderline, the California 12 right. bodies? That one turned out to be a fake. You know, you've well, got, you know, or yeah. Caesar, Caesar Sayoc, the, the Sayoc. fake bomber. People don't, right? don't even remember that one. Right. Um, but, you know, and... and but you've got, you know, the, the problem is we're facing a, a breakdown of law and order in this society. Right. And, and this is the evidence of it. The evidence is that we have crimes that are um, either they're, they're not getting solved because there are political ramifications to solving the crime. And so, you know, whether you're talking about the FBI or the D.C. police in the case of Seth Rich, you know, I really think that there are forces that don't want to uncover the truth or let the truth get out about what happened, whatever that truth may be. Right. And, you know, your guess is as good as mine as to what uh, happened to uh, Seth Rich. Uh, so, um, you know, that's that's a breakdown of law and order. You also have a breakdown of law and order and uh, based on the fact that people are committing obvious crimes and they're not getting punished for it. So we have the, the you know, the Iwan situation, right. which I just think is, a, is just an extraordinary um, situation where you have an actual spy ring in Congress. Um, you have evidence all over the place. Confirmed. That, it was confirmed. Confirmed. I mean, the, yeah. Right. And, and these guys are getting like, you know, sweetheart, uh, you know, no, no jail time. And actually, you know, the judges are getting up and saying, oh, you know, you know, these, these people are being persecuted. I mean, come on. I mean, this is, this is outrageous. Uh, you know, you have that guy, uh, Ed Buck, the, the the DNC donor in LA now he's got what his you know these these, these young African American uh, men keep dying and in his apartment I mean he's not in jail he's not getting prosecuted okay um, you know I, I, this is all just uh, you know as a lawyer is very very frustrating because we are you know sworn to uphold the law. You know, I went to law school. I became a lawyer because I wanted to practice law in the greatest legal system on earth. I always believed that this was the greatest legal system on earth. But can you really believe that when you have such uh, a disparity in how justice is actually meted out in this country? And when you have, you know, law enforcement can't, can't even solve, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a murder in D.C., uh, you know, because of the political ramifications, well, you know, wh wh what kind of legal system are we talking about now? Yeah, look at Michael uh, Cohen, right? He's, uh, he, I mean, he's, he's a lawyer, right? And what did he do? He lied once, once to Congress, and then he fudged some tax stuff, right? But look at Hillary Clinton. She lied six times to Congress. Debbie yeah. Wasserman Schultz, they, they, they lie, they lie, they lie, they, you know, and, and on and on and on. And it's like, how I mean, it, it really is that sand and the head in the sand kind of phenomenon where you you look at you look at the people that are coming back. They're they're gonna they're gonna hey, look. Bernie Sanders could win. That's the that's the point, right? It's because because there's enough. Look, the the electorate is is thirty percent maybe Democrats and twenty five percent Republicans, and that giant gap of independence in between can swing the election and they, they came back for Sanders, you know, and, uh, so that's, I mean, that is the scary part of it. You have Trump, the, you know, the entertainer who for whatever reason was, you know, assigned the presidency. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you've got, you've got, you've got the, uh, a Bernie Sanders who, although, although these are the flaws and these are the, his, these are the fundamental obstacles in my view that, he cannot deny, right? You can't move forward and say Russia, Russia, Russia because of all of the the under the underbelly of what we're talking about that exists, right? But nonetheless, he's going to come out with the people who are going to say TYT is going to say, well, they don't even I don't even think TYT admits that election fraud occurred, but 
they're going to say, well, single payer, college tuition at city and state universities and, and, and get money out of politics, right? You know, yeah. term limits, all, all these things. But, but, but how do you, right? I, I mean, it's just, I know I'm going around in a circle and I don't really, I don't really know the, the solution. I've tried to communicate to people that this is the big obstacle because you, how do you move forward and, you know, and, and rally behind someone when you know that, that the whole thing is that, that it's not a real election, Right. right, and that people right. have not only it's not real, but people have died trying to cover it up, and right. and how many people have have been threatened, you know, to cover it up with their jobs or their, you know, you know, so, I I, I don't know, so what about well, like let's let's talk about I mean how does it how does it spill over? Look at Venezuela. Are you, are you following that one? You know, oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. we you know we uh, got Pompeo uh, lying his ass off. Well, you know, uh, you know, I'm I'm based in Miami, so you know the, right, the Venez- right. Venezuelan situation is something that we're following very, very closely. We actually, you know, we we represent um, clients from Venezuela all the time. Um, you know, there's a lot of upheaval going on right now because I think, um, you know, people are 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 scared shitless. Venezuelans are uh, that there's going to be you know a coup. Um, and they're going to install this, uh, you know, this this uh, this Guaido guy, or and uh, I mean, so, you're, look, so your feelers in Miami is that the people are afraid that Guaido is going to get uh, appointed? I, I think. Well, I think uh, I think the people that that's, still that's, live- that's the opposite of the narrative that they're selling. They're right, saying well, the people in Miami are for are all pro uh, are pro Guaido. And, well, and there, anti- there, may, there may be some exiles from Venezuela, right? Just like you have, you know, Cuban exiles that always wanted to overthrow Castro, right? I mean, it's the same thing. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I don't think most people in a country ever want to be invaded and have their like a new leader installed by like an imperialist power like the U.S. Right. It never works out well. Right. Okay, I, you can't think of a single history, a uh, single example in history where the U.S. has installed somebody and th- that actually worked out well for the country. Because mm-hmm. when the U.S. installs um, a, a, a puppet, you know, the point is, is that they want to uh, sap that country's resources for the benefit of the U.S. And, uh, you know, I'm not apologizing for Maduro or the Chavez regime, and I'm not saying that that's you know um, you know that they they necessarily ran Venezuela in a good way. I don't believe that at all. But honestly, that's a that's a problem that the Venezuelans have to figure out. Okay, um, right. they're a sovereign country. Um, you know, if, uh, if 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 they want to get rid of Maduro, they're going to have to figure out a way to do that on their own. But for us to just like uh, you know, come in and and start saber rattling at them. You know, it's the same old story. I mean, Venezuela has a lot of oil. Um, you know, I don't think the U.S. is going to be successful there, though. At the end of the day, yeah. I think Russia and China are going to um, prevent the U.S. from actually going in there and taking out Maduro. Yeah, Russia announced today that they, uh, or actually Maduro. Announced today, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, that uh, they're moving Pedavesa's European uh, office to Moscow. Okay. So they're they're basically taking Europe out of the loop. The United States already reneged on how many tens of billions of dollars uh, through Pedavesa in the U.S. So they're not they why fight? They're not they're not even Maduro's actually like cutting his losses. Mm-hmm. He's right. He's cutting his losses in the U.S. He's pulling out of Europe and giving it almost 100 percent to Maduro, which is which is pretty which is pretty powerful. It's the sign of a businessman. But I I, I agree, I agree with you that uh, that uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that I think that the people that Trump amassed, you know, Pompeo, uh, Elliot Abrams, uh, mm. John Bolton. Steve Mnuchin, the fucking Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. These are all these, these are, are all these are like hacks. old old Bush, old yeah. George Bush cronies. I mean, you know, when I, I, I 
from from my angle, the be- Trump was best in the campaign, and uh, you know, in the Republican debates when he was slamming uh, Jeb Bush. Uh, so for him to just do, you know, I think it's just a complete one eighty uh, to surround himself with Bush cronies in his administration. Very very disappointing. Um, but like I said, I think Trump is the flip side of Bernie Sanders. I think, you know, uh, I think there's a, a lot of uh, rhetoric uh, now that these uh, sort of celebrity politicians, you know, Trump is sort of the consummate celebrity politician. Uh, I think Bernie Sanders is now a celebrity politician. Uh, you know, they're, they're um, you know, there's. There's uh, there's just a complete divide between what is uh, you know promised in all of the campaign rhetoric and what actually happens you know once somebody gets into the White House. Yeah, I mean, like for example, Trump is Trump is oligarchy on steroids, really. I mean, mm-hmm. people people want to support him. My my feel of the people who blindly support or or venomously support Trump is that they believe that. He's a alpha male, strong guy, and he's 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 going to do right for the country. He's going to build that wall. He's gonna he's gonna kick out the Muslims and whatever else he says. But the real problem, the 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 essence of the problem, where, where's Trump on on election fraud? Right? He's saying right. that 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 it was uh, you know foreigners voted right. But when what well, we're talking about is election fraud. So so Trump is is. I think it's important to realize is that Trump is oligarchy on steroids. There's no, yeah. there's not only no change, but it gets worse. The income and wealth inequality in this country gets worse when you turn your back on the banking industry. Goldman, you assign Goldman Sachs again as the treasury, the secretary of the treasury. You hand the right. treasury over to Goldman Sachs again. Like right. that's that's draining the swamp. No, that's. I mean, it's throwing gas on it. That's like yeah. throwing gas on the fire, right? Right. So, but but again, people are going to say, "Ah, you guys are socialists." You you, but Jared, you're a socialist. You like you know you want socialism in America, I, right? I I don't I don't know what I am anymore. I'm actually trying to remove myself right. as much as possible from the political discourse because I think it's, I think it's it's become non-productive. I mean, I recently got banned from Twitter because yeah. uh, I, you know, I said some mean things about you know Kamala Harris, mm-hmm. which I guess is a you know uh, cause for getting uh, censored by uh, Twitter uh, in this day and age. But I've actually been sort of happier now that I'm sort of uh, you know forbidden to participate in the Twitter conversation because I think it's mostly unproductive. Um, you know, I you know, just back at something you said about people wanting a strong man in Trump. Yeah, I think mm. you're absolutely right. I think that a big part of his uh, popularity was, you know, that he portrays himself as an alpha male, and I think that's what uh, people are really, you know, they're craving somebody or some force to come in and rectify what, in truth, is you know, decades and decades of corruption that have been allowed to fester and accumulate and really corrode our political system to the point where it's non-functional um, and, you know, we're living in a complete and total oligarchy uh, and they want a strong man to clean that up. Um, the problem is, is that uh, I don't think that's possible, okay? I think right. that, uh, you know, the, the oligarchic forces that actually control this country and you can call it the deep state i think that's you know fairly um you know when you look at theories of the deep state it's a fairly accurate way of describing what's going on but um the deep state has an iron uh grasp on the power uh, on power in this country uh right. and has had it for some time mm-hmm. maybe we're finally beginning to wake up to that fact um but you know that's that I don't think a strong man or an alpha male can really do anything about that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, the awakening—the awakening of oligarchy uh, 
choking politics is is not i would say it's not happening here i mean there's there's you know the q phenomena mm. and you know and, and all that stuff but but i think the real tell is europe is is france the yellow yep. vests because the average person on the street when you say you know when you approach the average person i mean the videos that i've seen and translated from Fr uh, french is that most people get it they say, yeah. "Oh, yeah, it's the oligarchy. It's the it's the banking industry choking our politics." Uh, it, it, you know, and they they get it. But here, if you say it, uh, then you're a socialist. You want socialism. You want Venezuela where they're eating their pets, right? Right. So, yeah. so to get a, I mean, there's where again you got to echo what Sanders always said is that the change comes from the bottom down, right? Not that it comes from yeah. the bottom. Up but, and not the yeah. top down, right? Well, but I gotta, I gotta tell that, you that though, is the yellow vest movement. I, I think it, yeah, but I think it goes even deeper. You know, it's not just that a lot of people don't seem to get it, at least by comparison with maybe a country like France. But I, there just seems to be a real, um, I don't know. It just almost seems like an intellectual deficit in this country. Where, you know, I mean, I, again, if, if, you, if you stay on, like, you know, social media or independent media, you see a lot of discourse from people. A lot of people are very pissed off. A lot of people, yeah. you know, whether they're supporting Trump, Bernie Sanders, I mean, they are in favor of some radical changes in this country, whether or not those are happening. But I think, you know... When you go out into society, a lot of people are just really, really asleep in this country. I mean, yeah. they're like in a hypnotic state, and I think they've been put there by the the just um, the untold powers of the media and the entertainment establishment in this country, which have been working on people for so long and just turning them into mental zombies. Right. Um, and that's the frightening thing. And that's why we don't have, you know, an active population that is actually, you know, going out, you know, and getting in, you know, getting into the streets, getting into the faces of politicians and actually trying to make sense. I mean, when you have rallies in this country, you know, it's like a bunch of zombies out there. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, we, you we, know, I, I covered the yeah. I covered that women's the women's march and it uh, here in New York and it turned out to be a anti-Trump, you know, it was women and with pink pussy hats screaming in the right. streets. I hate Trump. No wall, no wall. And then when you, when you ask them, they say, well, what's the solution? And they say, well, Camilla Harris. And you <laughs> say, well, what, why? And she said, well, 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 she's a strong black woman. <laughs> right. And, and I said, well, how's that going to, how does that solve, you know, and, and it's, as you say, it's the gaslighting from the corporately owned media the oligarchy that owns the media that that is you know that pays that that is the oligarchy who pays off the deep state that gets you know a, a hundred and twenty thousand dollar salary and then they get a seven hundred thousand dollar fucking summer home or or mm -hmm. some other kickback under the table shady political contribution to your wife's campaign or Right, and that's it's the money. It's the it's the it's the money. Why is it? Why is a judge? Why is a judge in America? You know, and this isn't an easy gig. I mean, I sued the city of New York in that uh, in a in a lawsuit. Right, I was pro se. Right, and I I tried. Mm. I exposed the ticket quota, and just to mm. get a recording of of the city's own people confessing. I had I had audio confessions of of officers in the Department of Sanitation confessing, telling the the rank and file exactly how the ticket quota works, encouraging it. And I was an enforcement agent, so I was in the room. Mm. And mm. I still, in the final analysis, you talk about busted judicial, I couldn't get the judges to even listen to the recording. Mm. That it was so, I mean, that's that's the... The degree of corruption and judicial, and the the power of, you know, going along with the establishment, like that's right. that's the fundamental problem. With is why I wanted to talk to you with Sanders is that if you go along with it, you go along with it. There's no right. there's no swerving around that. You know what I mean? That fundamental point that you're not 
you're 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 um what am I saying? You're subjugating yourself to to the corruption, right? right? And 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 how ha- how do we get around that? Is it another election or is it 20 million, 50 million yellow vests in the street in America? And and I I could tell you just, you know, trying that idea uh that you you can't get imagine Hillary Clinton supporters that hate Trump and the Trumpsters that hate Hillary and the Bernie bros and you can't get them in the same room. Like nobody's right. the, the gaslighting has been so effective that right. no one could have a conversation anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, that's a great point. I, I, I like to think of, you know, the analogy I like to think of is, is, you know, think about the Soviet union, you know, before the Berlin wall came down, that was a very heavily propagandized society. Um, but it was a different model uh, from our our country, where you know people are very divided in their political opinions. I mean, in a communist country like the Soviet Union, you could only have one political opinion. Here, you you you're you're allowed to. I mean, everything is sort of done through this celebrity politician model. So people aren't really talking about ideas so much as they are people. Um, and uh, but. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, what was missing from the Soviet Union and what I think is missing in our society is a genuine political sphere where, you know, people are able to get into a room, uh, whether that's, you know, locally, um, in, you know, community functions or what have you, or nationally, you know, in, in a legislature and really sit in a room and actually talk about policy in a serious way that lends itself to good governance. I mean, that's why we're in a, I think, a political crisis. Uh, How you get out of that situation? Um, Well, I think, you know, you have to think about um, uh, ultimately, you know, what is the thing that holds this whole system together? And and from my angle, it's it. It's the media. It's the mainstream media that keeps the illusion going. Take away the mainstream media, um, and I think this country goes in an entirely different direction. Uh, I think the mainstream media uh, has, you know, ever since the real the rise of of radio and television in this country, I think it's there's there's been an assault on the, the 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 true local institutions that. Uh, created uh, the the democracy um, that uh, this country uh, did develop at at a certain point in its history. So I, I think the media has been an assault on that. How do you fight the media? Well, that's you know that's the million dollar question right there. I mean, I think one one thing you can do is just on a personal level is you can try not to you know you can try to deprogram yourself and not pay attention to it. And try to help deprogram others, but it's a long, long struggle. I mean, we're dealing with very, very, very powerful forces here. Yeah, no, it's hard. I mean, the gaslighting. I, I mean, just that Russia example. When you when you back the tape up, it started almost. It was almost like laughable. Like <laughs> Russia hacked the election, and and I mean, I I saw it. I said to myself, you know what? In a year. From now, people are going to say, because it's, it's subtle. They say, yeah, maybe there is some truth to it. Russia, oh, yeah. You know, and, and, and it's like the, 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 the powers that be are slowly erasing the tracks. And, and you go a little more and say, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe Trump did go to Russia and have a Russian, you know, more than just a little Russian dressing, right? And then, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it goes, and that's how it happens. It's subtle and it's, but it's persistent, you know, and right, you know, and and uh, you know, the, as I said before, this isn't an easy gig. I mean, in terms of like shadow banning and 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 people's accounts, like I could wake up tomorrow and and be gone because Google said so. You know, YouTube right. just for and make up and 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 you get like you you challenge these um the, these companies as a as a YouTuber and they they don't even respond to you they they right. they don't even answer your fucking email you know and it's right. like so that's I mean that is I think that that's what that's that's what we're going to see more of uh, coming yeah. into this new election there's people like 
that are speaking out are going to get uh, censored. They're going oh, to yeah. get put into a category of conspiracy theories. Uh, let me let me ask you this. Right? Now, when I was looking at this shit, and you, you talk about it because you're, you're a lawyer and you, you, you would know more about it than anybody. But Alex Jones, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Alex Jones have probably the greatest First Amendment case like short of, you know, uh, the the people versus Larry Flint in terms of him being deleted off of three major platforms, right? Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, and YouTube all at once, right? Collusion uh-huh. between major corporations. Tell me that's not a... Uh, um, well, I would I would Forget say, about his big mouth, but just the, the fact that he got deleted. N- not so much a First Amendment case as an antitrust case, okay. potentially. Uh, I, yeah, I think you know there 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 are antitrust um, implications there. Uh, you know, if you have uh, because here's the thing about the First Amendment. I mean, we, we actually my law firm filed a class action against uh, Yelp uh, a number of years ago uh, when Yelp first came out. Um, it was uh, you know a lot of small businesses would get you know, these bad reviews on their, uh, you know, like a restaurant or something, get really bad reviews, and then they would get, um, you know, called by these Yelp salespeople that were trying to sell them advertising, and they would say, and, you know, we can uh, remove these bad reviews that were left on your restaurant if you pay us, you know, like $900 a month or something. So, you know, we felt that that was very extortionate. A lot of businesses came to us, and they still come to us, uh, and uh, we filed a class action in California, uh, and we got kicked out of court because um, there's a statute that applies not just to Yelp, but to all these social media companies, uh, Twitter, Facebook, what, what have you as well. Um, the Communications Decency Act, which uh, uh, Congress passed, um, I believe, under uh, Clinton, and uh, it basically makes these companies immune from suit. It gives them right. far-reaching immunity for being sued based on what they choose to publish or not publish on their uh, website. And it's very, very frustrating. Um, that's not to say you might not br- be able to bring an antitrust case, but I think what you know, I think the whole thing with Alex Jones is just—it's a disgraceful chapter in American history because this is a country where people are supposed to be independent minded free thinking they're supposed to be able to think for themselves okay you're supposed to have a country of people uh, or any society sh- the people should be strong minded enough to be able to uh, you know uh, watch a show whether it's Alex Jones or whatever and decide what they want to believe and what they don't want to believe okay uh, why are we uh, being treated like infants, okay, by these uh, social media companies, which are just another arm of the deep state, because yeah. you don't get to become a Facebook or a Twitter or a uh, YouTube uh, without the deep state's blessing, okay? Right. You have to play ball at some point. So it's just another arm of our oligarchic government, and, you know, it treats us like you know, like uh, mental infants that we can't think for ourselves, you know. So, um, you know, it's a shameful period in American history as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no doubt. So so we're up about an hour and people start going to sleep after an hour. So, <laughs> so what else, man? So I, I've been flashing your uh, your book. Are you still promoting the uh, What Happened to Bernie Sanders book? Is that something? Uh, yeah, what what I mean, else do you I, I think people should, should, should read it, especially if they – um, you know, or, or better yet, buy it to buy it for a friend who, mm. you know, may be on the verge of spending hundreds or maybe even thousands of dollars donating to Bernie Sanders for the next cycle because they're, you know, in the Bernie cult. You know, buy it for a friend and, and, and it's, you know, you can buy it on Amazon for like $10 for the paperback and you might end up saving them a lot of money. Right, right. Yeah, I got you up here. I got your your uh, Amazon page up right now. It's saying eleven ninety nine Kindle. We got twelve twelve dollars twenty three cents uh, paperback. So people could see that. Go get it at uh, Amazon. What else? When are you out of uh, when are, When are you out of Twitter jail? Oh, I, I'm permanently suspended. Permanently. Ooh. Yeah. 
<laughs> as far as I know. So, and and the that's, keyword. That's, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I I use Gab, um, uh -huh. and uh, Facebook. You know, uh, Facebook occasionally, although I I really don't use that. You know, to express myself. Um, but I, you know, at the end of the day, I I think people, you know, one thing I'm realizing is that you know you know, especially those of us that have been very active in social media or, you know, independent media, sometimes we, we get, we, we get into our own bubble. And, yeah. you know, I think people need, you know, times like this, people need to, you know, get out of your bubble and, you know, uh, get into your community and talk to the people around you face to face about what's going on, because we've got some really sh serious shit going on in this country. And, you know, I think it's time to, you know, have those face to face discussions with, you know, people you care about, your family, your friends, your neighbors, you know, you know, and, you know, it's uh, because I think there's some 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 bad shit is headed headed our way down the road. Uh, well, I, you know, I'll say I'll say about you, you know, because you guys, you were fighting the good fight, you know, long before, like I even got involved in this. So I'm like a new Jack. I'm a new guy on the block. But uh, uh, yourself and, and others, uh, you know. You, you, you were one of my heroes. I was like, man, this guy is like, this guy is doing, he's doing what, what, what people, you know, in this country should be doing, standing up and uh, suing. So, you know, no, no, uh, there's no, no love lost there. I think a lot of people admire what you did. I, I can, I can see where the, the, um, you know, you want to punch, you want to bang yourself in the head when you see people falling for the same trap. You remember, you remember like the same progressive. You remember that chick that the oh what's yeah, her name Debbie I remember her. It was, She like I think she went crazy. I think she like she had she was seeing she was seeing it, you know, so clearly, and it just like her head exploded or right, something because right. she couldn't take it anymore. She was right. like, these people are so fucking stupid. How <laughs> stupid you gotta be? You can't yeah. see what's right in front of your face. And she was wow. ca she called every every bit of the corruption going on. You know. And uh, you know, I, I I see you as one one of those, but but a a sane version of it, where you just like, hey, fuck it, if you're gonna if you want to go ahead, give twenty seven dollars. You want to buy a little hopium for twenty seven dollars, and <laughs> you know, go right ahead, right? Because that's where I'm at. I mean, I don't I don't think that I get attacked constantly. I mean, I, I'm one of the few that I I don't censor the the comments. I let people. I've been called everything but, you know, but a child of God. And it's, I, I, I think it's funny, you know, because you actually learn. I believe in the First Amendment. I believe in, in, in go ahead, call me whatever you want, because it doesn't make me look bad. It makes you look bad by right. saying, you, you know, stupidity. I'm a socialist. I'm a fucking socialist. I'm a, I'm a commie. I'm a, a you know, a, you know, buck tooth cousin fucker, whatever. I've been called every. <laughs> You know everything. You know it's like so what? But but uh, I think that is the fight, and to somehow re somehow maintain a sense of humor through it all, because this is going to be good, man. I mean, if if Bernie Sanders, first of all, I'll say this: if Bernie Sanders gets the Democratic, uh, uh, if he gets their blessing, and he uh -huh. is the candidate, he will be the next president of the United States, right? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm telling you because why? Because the Democrats cheat and they'll mm -hmm. cheat his way in and you've got all the never, you've got the, the, uh, all the, the, the people that just hate Trump, right? That's, that's a lot of people. You've got all of the, the, uh, the, the progressives, whatever the hell that means anymore, right? You've got all of the, the Hillary people. Why? Because the Democrats said you vote for the vote blue. Vote blue, right? And so, in my view, if Sanders is the candidate, he he will win. If they vote in, if they if they pick a Camilla Harris or a or a Joe Biden shit sandwich, it's over. Trump gets another four years. Right? Mm -hmm. But I think at this point, the only one, and we haven't even said you know mentioned the name, but Tulsi Gabbard, right? If Sanders gets the nomination. Despite all the things we just talked about, all the corruption, he'll he'll likely he'll likely run and become the next president. Maybe die in office, or you know, one-term president. And you know, and is that is I guess let me let's just finish here. I'll, I'll give you the last yeah. word. If 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 Sanders gets in, 
And he continues to say, get money out of politics, single payer, universal health care, free medic, you know, Medicare for all, free college tuition at city and state universities, raise the corporate tax rate, right? Is it a bad thing? Is it, is it, is that worse than just by saying it and rallying the people? Is that worse than four more years of Trump? Hmm. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a lot baked into that uh, hypothetical. <laughs> yeah, let, yeah. Let, let me tackle it by saying this. Um, I, I think, to, I think it's clear to me now, having gone off through this whole thing since 2016, having really had to come to terms with a, you know, a clear understanding of uh, the American political system, so that we can litigate the DNC fraud lawsuit uh, as well as possible. Um, I think that it's become clear to me that whoever gets the presidency of the United States is somebody that is appointed, not elected. Uh -huh. and, and, and so the question is, who's appointing the president of the United States? And I think the appointment comes from the deep state. And so what does that mean? Mm. That means that, and I think that happened in the case of Trump. I think Trump was placed on the road to the presidency in 2005 when he was given The Apprentice. Okay? Not mm. everybody, you know, not every billionaire real estate developer just gets the number one show on NBC handed to them out of the blue. Okay. And I don't think a lot of people understood at the time what was going on, but I think that's the reality of what was what happened. You, you may be right. You may be right that Bernie Sanders is on, you know, a similar track that Trump was on. Although, you know, I think the age thing starts to become a factor at some point. But yeah, I mean, it could be that, um, you know, the deep state will want to appoint Bernie Sanders president. For you know, you know the reasons that that may be somewhat analogous to the reasons that they wanted to appoint Donald Trump, but I think you'll get you'll get the same result that we're getting right. with Trump. Okay, Trump's three, three, uh, you know, they they both have sort of uh, you know both Trump and Sanders are very interesting. They both have three sort of uh, uh, key principles that they're always articulating. For Trump, it was you know the wall drain the swamp, lock her up, okay? Right. For Sanders, it's, uh, you know, uh, 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 health care, um, you know, the, the free college tuition, and, you know, the, the corporate tax, okay? Um, and, but I think in reality, um, you're not going to get anything from any of those categories. Just like Trump has not built the wall, you know, he's not, um, locked up Hillary Clinton. He's not drained the swamp. Uh, you're not going to get. Um, you'll, you'll get a lot of talk, but you'll not get anything substantive. Whether it's Bernie Sanders or somebody else that sort of comes in there as sort of the, you know, blessed Bernie Sanders, you know, socialist, whoever that may be. You know, I don't think it'll be Tulsi Gabbard. I think it'll be, you know, I, I really do think it'll be a Kamala Harris type uh, or. Um, you know, somebody like her uh, that they'll appoint and they'll really try to uh, give the country this idea that Bernie Sanders is blessing this person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's right. going to be sort of the big selling point is that, you know, you're getting, you know, a, 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 a Kamala Harris, you know, for everything that she supposedly brings to the table, and then she's being blessed by Bernie Sanders, you know, because they can get Bernie Sanders to do whatever they want. If he's blessed Hillary Clinton, he'll bless fucking Satan, okay? <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line. <laughs> you have somebody that will literally get up there and fucking bow to Satan, because that's what he did in 2016. Yeah. I'm sorry, but uh, right. she stands for the exact opposite of every every single principle that he was articulating right. throughout the campaign and taking people's money, uh, uh, and now he's taking more money. I mean, at some point, somebody becomes despicable. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, really good talking to you, Jared Beck. Thank you so much for, for, uh, for giving your time, giving your voice to this. 
And uh, we'll see. I mean, it's going to be a fascinating, you know, fascinating uh, next two years. You know, in a year, we're going to have primaries. And uh, we shall see, my friend. Thank okay. you so much, man. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Let, uh, let me know when it's up, all right? Yeah, it'll be up. I'll, uh, because when I live, it'll be up. Uh, I'll do it right now and within awesome. uh, within the hour. <laughs> oh, nice. All, all right, right man. It was good, good talk. Enjoyed thank you, Joe. talking to you. Thanks thank for you. having me. Peace, okay, man. take care, Marcus. Peace. Bye. Peace. Wow, Jared Beck, man. Holy smokes, man. Fucking Jared Beck. We had him on the line, man. We heard from we heard from the lawyer, the DNC fraud lawsuit lawyer, man. Damn. He's got a lot of insight, man. That's a that's a good guy right there. I love that fucking guy, man. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going, man. So tomorrow, Bernie Sanders comes out on the quad, the East Quad in New York City. Brooklyn, New York, his hometown, and he's gonna he's going to address the hungry masses that want change in America. But are they gonna get change? Or are they gonna get more of the same? Is Bernie Sanders a shit sandwich? I don't know, man. Marcus Conti reporting. <laughs>